Close your eyes and breathe comfortably all the way through the body. As you practice the Dharma, whether it's being generous or observing the precepts or meditating, focusing on the breath, it's medicine, both for the body and for the mind, particularly with the breath. As you breathe in, you can soothe the different parts of the body, wherever there's tension, wherever there's pain. You can breathe in a way that helps that energy make the pain less, reduces the tension, helps the blood and energy flow in the body go a lot better. Because our minds are scarred, our minds are wounded by things that happen, things that happen to us from the outside and also from our own greed, aversion, and delusion. Those leave scars as well. And so you have to find some way of putting some medicine on the scars. So you breathe in a way that's soothing. You think about things that give rise to a sense of well-being in the mind. You think about how honorable it is to be generous and to be virtuous, how wise it is to be training the mind. Because there's so many crazy ways that people can look for happiness out there in the world, and they're harmful, both for them, the people who are searching for happiness in that way and for people around them. Whereas this way of searching for happiness is not harmful at all. It's actually healing for you and for the people around you. When you can bring the mind more under control, it means that other people are less subject to your changes in mood, and you're suffering less as well. So think of this as medicine for the mind. You need a good dose of Dharma every day. Breathing well, thinking about the Buddha, thinking about the Dharma, the Sangha, about what's really important in life. Because the world out there is telling you lots of other things are important that make you run after what little rewards they give you. But it's basically in their interest, it's not in your interest to go running around like that. So you want to do something that really is for your own well-being. And looking for your own well-being in this way doesn't create any divisions. If you look for well-being in terms of material gain or in terms of status or in terms of praise, when you gain those things, it means somebody else has to lose them, which creates divisions. But if you gain in generosity, gain in virtue, gain in the sense of well-being that comes as you train the mind, nobody loses at all. Everybody gains. So this is a kind of search for happiness that leads to unity, leads to harmony. Unlike the happiness that leads to divisions, like we see so much around us right now. So you have to make your choice. Here's This is the wise choice, as you know, to search for happiness that's harmless, a happiness that goes deep down inside and cures all the illnesses of the mind. And at the same time, some of the illnesses in the body get cured as well, but that's not the big issue. The big issue is the illnesses in the mind. Once those are cured, then there's no suffering. Even though the body may grow ill, it may be, in, may be in pain, even when it dies, if the mind has a state of inner well-being, it's not going to be affected by these things. So always keep this in mind, that this is the way you want to find happiness, and it's the same, at the same time it's a way of healing all the scars from events from outside, all the scars from your own greed and aversion and delusion. It's really genuine medicine for the mind. It really works. It's worked for 2,500 years, and it's worked for more than that, actually, with many, many Buddhas who've been in the past, and that's the same medicine that's going to be prescribed by the Buddhas in the future. So make sure you make the most of it while you've got the opportunity. <laughs>